Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to another episode of the Dean Seekers. Again, Sheikh Abu Osama. How are you doing, Sheikh? Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well. Hope you and the uh, respective viewing audience are all doing well. I mean, inshallah. So today's episode is going to be misrepresentation of the religion. Uh, I think it's very relevant as there's been some controversy at the moment. I'm sure everybody's heard about it. This, this film that's been released. I don't know if I should mention the title because I don't know. I don't want anybody to watch it. But as if anybody hasn't heard about it or doesn't understand the premise of it, it's a movie that's meant to depict the events after the Prophet Sallallahu passing in relation to his daughter Fatima. Uh, but the issue with this film was that it was put together in a very offensive way. There's a lot of things that went wrong with it, and the main issue I think that everybody reacted to was the fact that they tried to depict the Prophet Sallallahu face. And after reading an article, I was I read that although in some scenes they hid his face with a light, there were some scenes where they showed his full face, and I believe that's where a lot of the outrage come from. So, Sheikh, how do we feel about something like that? Someone depicting the Prophet's son's face? Well, there's a lot to unpack. A lot. Um, at the top of the list, I think it should be known that the person who was responsible for putting the film together, and the people were responsible, are those people who claim a love and a connection to Ali ibn Abi Talib and Ahl al-Bayt. When in reality, the people put it together, as we find many people who make that claim, not all, but many, they're really shayateen al-ins and al-jinn. They have nothing to do with Ahl al-Bayt because Ahl al-Bayt, Ali ibn Abi Talib, being from amongst them, they have love for the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they had love for the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which shows us how we're supposed to love Al Al Bayt and look at them correctly. The man who was behind the movie has a history of cursing the companions. So that in and of itself, what would you expect, you know, from someone who curses the Nabi of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? In addition to that, from the negative um, aspects of the film itself, not only the fact that they were trying to display and show the face of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but there was a lot of racism in there. And that the companions were depicted as being people of color and being African American and being a passionate, you know, supporter of the concept Black Lives Matter. Not the ethos, not the Marxist views that the people who made that organization had for them, nope, but the concept of raising the consciousness of people around the globe about the hypocrisy that we find in America and the way that the police, the way they police us African-Americans and the double standards that they have towards us, being a person who's passionate about that, I'm offended mm -hmm. how they would bring the companions in such a light that being of color is negative and so forth and so on. So we ask Allah to deal with everyone justly as he will deal with everyone justly and that he gives those people their recompass for the sacrilegious act that they embarked upon. And Allah is al-musta'an, help is sought from him. Yeah, I mean, you touched on it briefly there, Sheikh, but, you know, they did depict certain companions of the Prophet Sallallahu in a negative light. They were shown to be corrupt and conniving, um, for example, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, to name a few, and also the Prophet Sallallahu wife, Aisha, is depicted. They uh, All of the faces in the movie were made up of CGI, they claim, all of the religious figures of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and his companions were apparently made up using CGI, although that's made still what? CGI, so it's computer-generated. Oh, computer-generated yeah. images. So they're saying it's not an actual person that's meant to be playing his role. They put some, they put you know, animation on top of his face. So it's not a real person that's actually you know the face that they're showing. However, they're still depicting the face. But anyways, that the face that they use for Aisha, is meant to be made to look very ugly and she's uh, meant to be a jealous be person. Aisha was a beautiful woman. May Allah be pleased with her. And Allah mentioned in the Quran just about the regular Muslims. He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhaladhina aminu la yaskhar qawmi min qawm, asayin yakunu khayrun minhum. Oh, you believe, don't some of you allow yourselves to make sukhri of others. Don't uh, 
laugh at and put down uh, one another. You can't do that to me. I can't do that to you. The same ayah went on to say, "Wala tell me zuhum fusakum." And the same ayah said, "Wala tanabazu bil alqab." Don't say bad, negative things about each other. Don't call each other by offensive nicknames. That's you and I doing it to one another. So what about doing it to the best generation that the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khairu Nas Qarni. The best of the people is the generation that I'm sent in, me and my companions, Radiallahu Anhu. It's insanity. You know that emoji where green vomit is coming out of the emoji? Yeah. That wouldn't be enough to depict the real feelings that I have for such a thing. Mm. Wallahi, Allah wanted good for Abu Bakr and Umar and for Aisha. And the proof of that is, now that they're dead, their deeds continue to carry on and that we're practicing Islam. And people like that are talking bad about them and depicting them in this negative light. So therefore, Yom al Abu Bakr, Umar, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with them, will get the rewards of those people if they are even Muslims. If they're even Muslims. But even if they're not Muslims, they're going to get the rewards of anything that those people did good in the dunya. The dua of the believers in the Quran, Rabbana la tazakulubana ba'dama ba'dama ifhadaytana ba'da ifhadaytana Oh our Lord, don't cause our hearts to go astray after you have guided us aright. When we come into the religion of Islam, we come into the religion of Islam as a direct result of Allah guiding us to Al-Hidayah and the Sirat Al-Mustaqeem and as a result of the sacrifices of those companions. And it's like our mothers and fathers, mm -hmm. one of the reasons why your mother, your mother, your mother is because of all the sacrifices she made. And then your father. Why your mother, your mother, your mother? Because she bore you, she carried you, she delivered you, she suckled you, she she protected you. Wallahi, thumma billahi, thumma tallahi. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Aisha, and those companions, may Allah be pleased with them, they've done more for us than our mothers. And that's why all of them are in the Jannah al firdaus. And I say right here, calling Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, by his ism and adham, the greatest name that he has. If the slave makes dua to Allah by that name, Allah answers dua. I ask and pray to Allah to put us along with Abu Bakr and Umar and Aisha, wherever they are, Yom al may Allah put us with them. And the people who made the film and who feel that negative way about them, may he put them where they deserve to be. Because we want to be with and next to Aisha in the Jannah. They asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, who's the most beloved person to you? He said, Aisha. They said, no, no, we know. That's your wife. But from the men, from us, he said, her father. May Allah be pleased with him. Umar radiallahu anhu. He said about him, Umar. If there was a Nabi to come after me, it would have been Umar. So we say, and, and, and I have to say this, I almost became a Shiite. I almost became a Shiite when I first became a Muslim because I thought, due to my lack of knowledge and the media and things that were going on in America, I thought those people were against America. And I thought, in fact, that they were for African Americans, really, to be honest with you. But Allah he guided me away from that because I prayed in their masjid in New York on Atlantic Avenue and I met the Safir, the ambassador of Iran in that masjid. And he was nice, treated me nice, but I found out that those people were kithabin. They were pathological liars. And that's part of their deen, a tuqya. They say what? They don't mean. They say one thing, but they mean another thing. So, wallahi, Aisha, she is going to get her reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we love her. Allah mm -hmm. mentioned in the Quran, al Nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum. The Nabi is closer to the believers in their own selves. And his wives are here, their mothers. So after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions used to address her and the other wives, Ya umm al mu'minin. Ya umm al mu'minin. O oh, mother of the believers. That's why they never got married after the Prophet died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many companions would have been there ready to get married to any of his wives, take care of his wives after his death, and to honor his wives after his death, 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even more than they took care of their own wives. But none of them did it. Why? Hurrimat alaykum ummahatakum wa banatakum wa akhawatakum. Allah said in the Quran, you cannot marry your mothers, your daughters, and your sisters. So they're the mother of the believers. And all I can say is, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi. Yeah, Sheikh. I mean, you know, this film producer has a track record, you know, when I was reading the article about it, of offending Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims alike, surprisingly, even though he is Shia. And uh, I, I understand that his intention apparently was to try and depict an accurate portrayal of the Shia narrative of that time. But it just seems like the film was produced and made in a horrible way in the sense of there was a lot of stereotypes in there, there's a lot of racism, and even just the way the film was created apparently wasn't put together very well. So it, uh, I do struggle to understand as to why they created it, what was their intentions, did they want that outrage or something, but that leads me to the question of how how do we react to something like that? How do we as Muslims, obviously we, we feel outraged, but how do we react to something like that? I think that's a really important question, how do we react? Because unfortunately, due to lack of knowledge, we respond to these types of situations in a way that is un-Islamic and is negative. And it brings more blowback and negative um, press on the Muslims than positive. And that's a big problem. That's a major problem. And that's due to lack of knowledge. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man yuridillahu bi khaira, yufaqihu fi deen. If Allah wants good for someone, he helps him to comprehend and understand the religion. Mm -hmm. He has the ability to weigh the benefits and the harms against each other. The masalih. And the mafasid. So when we make al amr bin ma'roof and al nahyu an al munkar, we enjoin the good and we forbid the evil. You have to have knowledge of what you're doing, because if you're ignorant and you're just moving off of emotions, as many people from the ummah did in this instance and many instances in the past, when you don't have knowledge and you're just moving based off emotions, you'll wind up commanding with evil and you'll wind up preventing khair because you're ignorant. So this is the call to the Muslims. So at the, at the first thing I would mention, Akhi, and at the top of the list is to have the desire to defend Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his religion. This is from the best ibadat in Al-Islam. So everyone's praised for their niyyah. Everyone's praised for their niyyah. That people were passionate, upset, riled up, angry for Allah because of their love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if we truly love him, as Allah said in the Quran, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allaha fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah yaghfirlukum dhanubukum. If you people truly love Allah, mm -hmm. then follow me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Follow my sunnah. Follow the way that I've done things. So everybody knows that he was in a hostile environment in Mecca for 13 years. And people were given many problems. And then he went to Medina for 10 more years. And those problems continue with those challenges. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he sent the messenger to show us how to deal with people. So as I said, people are to be commended and praised for wanting to do something. We're not saying just sit back and do nothing. Hmm. The question is, what can you do effectively the hadith said, anyone who sees a munkar, فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِيَدِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ If you see something evil, change it with your hand if you have the ability. And if you don't, change it with your tongue by speaking out against it. If you don't, then change it and hate it in your heart. And that's the weakest of faith. Sometimes that's all you can do. That's all you can do. So look what Allah said in the Quran about this issue. That is wajib for us to want to help the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said in the Quran, لَتَسْمُعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا وَإِنْ تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Verily, this is the Quran. Verily, you Muslims. Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr and Uthman, you companions, the Tabi'een after, you Muslims, until Yawm al Qiyamah. Verily, you're going to hear from those who have been given the book before you, 
and you, from those who are polytheists, you're going to hear Evan Kathira, things that bother you. You're going to hear that constantly, repeatedly, perpetually. Allah said in that same ayat, in tasbiru wa tattaqu. But if you have sabr and you have taqwa, then that is from the azm al-umur. That's from strong determination. You see something, you hear something that's not right, and you have to deal with it with sabr. Sometimes all you can do is be patient while someone puts egg in your face, egg on your head. Because self-preservation, if you fought back, you lose your life. So you have to have sabr and you have taqwa. Someone does something to you, you can't go and go overboard and harm him and other innocent people and act in any way. That's one ayat. There's another ayat that's similar to it. Said almost the same thing. When tasbiru wa la yadurukum kaiduhum shay'a. If you have sabr and you have taqwa, their plots and plots will never hurt you anything. They won't hurt you at all. Yeah. So the Prophet Ahi Irfan, he was in Mecca. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had to deal with a lot. They tried to kill him. They killed his companions. They expelled him. And so many things happened. I mean, it, the, the Sunnah is replete, Islamic Syrian history, with examples of the sabr and the hikmah and the taqwa of the Nabi of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can y'all give you an example? Of course. Yeah. You sure don't mind? Of course. Yeah. The Prophet was at the Kaaba in Mecca, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And while he was at the Kaaba making sajda, the non-Muslims were over there drinking, getting high, getting drunk. Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, Umayy ibn Khalif, and the rest of those people. And there was a dead animal, a camel, that was rotten, and his intestines were stinking and rotten. They sent one of the foolish people from the kuffar, and they brought the intestines and told the slave, put this on his back. And they put it on the back of the Nibi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while he was praying. He wasn't even bothering them. He was doing his own thing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah, he finished praying. Abu Bakr, his companions, they saw what happened. They didn't do anything because it was a hostile environment and they didn't have the ability. So they had to hate it in their heart. But one person stepped up to the pump, stepped up to the plate. Do you know what it was? It was, I, it was, it was Fatima, Fatima. And she was a little young girl and she came and she cleaned off the intestines of the camel with her own blessed hands and clothes. That's love. Cleaned it off and then gave dawah to those men. She said to them, radiallahu anha, the same thing that the man said to Fir'aun in the Quran. Fir'aun was giving trouble to Musa. Fir'aun was strong. He said, Ana rabbukum ala. I'm your Lord, the Most High. He made all kind of trouble for Beni Israel. And there was a man from Beni Israel who was, it was a man who was concealing his Islam. And he was in the court of Fir'aun. But he didn't want to let them know he's a Muslim out of fear. So he was concealing his Islam until he couldn't take it anymore. And then he says something in the Quran and Fatima said the same thing. Do you fight against a man simply because he says, my Lord is Allah. Ya Firaun, do you fight against Musa, Harun, because they said, my Lord is Allah. So this is what Fatima said. رضي الله عنها So what Fatima did may Allah be pleased with her eternally is an indication of her defense of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's a proof that women defend Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well by writing things and doing whatever they can do as long as it is religiously sanctioned we're not going to say to sisters go out and march and protest and mix with men. We're not going to say to women get on TV and start screaming like maniacs and things like that. La, it's not permissible. So we cannot just do anything that we want to do simply because of our emotions. If you truly love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you. So those companions, they fell back to the black because they didn't have the ability. And had one of them stood up to do something, the Kufar Quraysh would have had a reason to decimate the whole 
Muslim community in Mecca because of the actions of a few. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the problems we have with ISIS, with Qaeda, Boko Haram of Nigeria, Shabab of Somalia, and these extremists all over the place. They want to make an Amr Maruf in a way that brings back more problems. And this is not the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, I mean, Sheikh, you know, you're talking about how uh, the Prophet sallam, is our example. And of course, when they offend the Prophet sallam, we're going to get angry about that. But should we turn to our example and see how he would react in that situation, which is that story that you just gave us. He practiced sabr and everything like that. And also, you've talked about it many times, Sheikh, you know, the... the practice of having good akhlaq, good character and understand that they're still representing the religion when they speak out against these things that we don't like we're still representing Islam so there's a certain way to do things Rasulullah was a gentle man he was a gentle man Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. high level of akhlaq highly intelligent you look at him you study his history and you can do anything except come to the conclusion he was divinely inspired Allah said, Verily, you, Muhammad, are on a high level of akhlaq, your manners, the way you are. He said to us, as a result of him being on a high level of akhlaq, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا You Muslims have in him a perfect example. A perfect example that as you're trying to navigate through the trials and tribulations of the dunya were kathiru mahi, and there are many, then look at him. Look how many close people to him he lost who died. I had a son who died the last day of Ramadan, Abdul Rahman al Awwal. May Allah put him into the Jannah al Firdaus. It broke my heart. I didn't know how I was going to give that Eid khutbah the next day. But do I become incapacitated? Do I commit suicide? Do I start. Questioning and judge, asking Allah, why me, why me? No. Having the Nabi, a perfect example. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lost his mother and father. He grew up as an orphan. He lost all four of his boys. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lost his companions, left, right, and center. He loved them, they loved him. He was put out of his home. He was called a liar, a magician, a soothsayer. All of those things. And he was patient. So surely what he went through in that regard... Is an example for me. He didn't have a lot of money, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't have a lot of money. Do I go in and sell drugs, rob a bank? Do I steal and cheat to get money by hook or crook? No. Whatever your situation is, you have in him a perfect example. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And you don't look at secondary people. You look at him primarily, mm -hmm. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this issue that has transpired. Is this the first time something like this controversial has happened to our ummah? La wallahi. The companions came one time to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Mecca, the hostile period, where they didn't have a lot of ability to do anything, and the non-Muslims were performing hajj that year. And from the hajj that the non-Muslims would perform is that they would not bring their weapons to hajj because they believed in Allah. Mm -hmm. They just made shit with the other idols and said, those idols, yukarribuna ilallahi zulfa, they get us close to Allah. They are our shufa'a in the law. They are our intercessors. But from what they used to do is they would leave their weapons of war at home. When the companions saw that, they said, hey, Ya Rasulullah, it's an evil playing, it's an even playing field now. They are making, they don't have their weapons. They don't have their weapons. We have ours. Let's go and let's deal with them once and for all, for all of what they did to us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the companions, I haven't been sent with a religion like that. I haven't been sent with a religion. They're performing hajj. And although they're now Muslims, we can't do something like that. Do you know the effect and the impact of that action? What it's going to have on our ummah and our dawah? And then he told them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in another hadith, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ بِالْحَنِيفِيَةِ samha. I've been sent with the religion that makes things easy. The religion that has musamaha, pardons, forgives, mm -hmm. it overlooks. So the Prophet وسلم, looked at the awaqib al umur, the awaqib al umur. What are going to be the 
results of the action that you're about to do. You're going to get married and you know, you just got married and your first marriage is not stable. Don't go get married again because the awaqib of the amur, the result of that is going to create a bigger problem. And that's from the fiqh of al-Islam, having jurisprudence and understanding of the ayat of the Quran and the authentic sunnah. And that's why the Prophet called, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the khawarij, these crazy behaving people. He described them and he said about them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hudathal asnan, sufahal ahlam, they're young in age and their ideas and their thoughts are crazy, absolutely insane. How could you do such a thing calling yourself rectifying this problem? One of the things I saw from the people who were out there protesting, raising their voices against this uh, film, a brother said to the massive crowds of Muslims, about the guy who produced it or wrote it, I don't know, the Shiite guy from um, yeah. Al Kuwait, he said about the guy and to the guy, your mother has been with so many men, she doesn't even know who your father is. I think he's alluding to what those Shiites do of Al Muta. Mm -hmm. Al Muta. Mm -hmm. But you can't say that to someone in public. <laughs> what kind of kalam is that? Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran about Abu Lahab. He said his wife will be carrying the fuel, the wood, and the fiber of the hellfire. As for Abu Lahab, he said, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab watab. Allah mentioned Abu Lahab by his nickname, Abu Lahab. But when it came to his wife, Allah said, Wamra'atuhu, his woman. He didn't even mention his wife in public, the name of his wife whose name was Hind, because she was an evil adversary, an enemy to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Islam and the Muslims. Mm -hmm. But Allah showed us we have to have adab, we have to have akhlaq. So you can't mention the man's wife. I don't know if you remember this, but in Birmingham, there was a brother, Mufti Furan. He was saying very inflammatory fatwas and things. He would dress up like Santa Claus. I've never heard of this. There's a brother in Birmingham, I'm sure brothers mm -hmm. know who I'm talking about. He said a lot of wild things mm -hmm. about all different things. You know, he used to wear a necklace and show his uh, physique and things like that. Me a lot guide us and guide him. I know the brother and I had a good relationship with him, you know, cordial in the past. I was shocked to see and to hear what he was saying and what he had turned into. Some people didn't like what he said or what they thought he said about the Palestinian oh, no, and the Palestinian no, no, situation. No, 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 no. So the brothers went to his house and they threw bricks and, and things in his house and broke his window and knocked the door down, kicked the door down, went in his house and they were effing and jeffing and blaming and skiming and scheming and conniving. And the man's wife is in his house, his children in his house. Well, Allahi, right now, as even think about it, I get chills running up and down my spine because I say... Those brothers who did that, they came back and they apologized. They came back and they apologized. Walhamdulillah. It shows Iman. They did something crazy and nasty. They came back and apologized. Similar to those brothers, one man had took the money of the pilgrims. They were going to make hajj and he was taking it to the bank. And these brothers, Muslims, robbed him took a, a large sum of cash. When they found out it was money for pilgrims going to Hajj, they brought, it, they brought the money back. So on one hand, what they did was very bad. Mm -hmm. But bringing the money back, that's a positive thing. So mm -hmm. I'm saying what I'm saying here, not for people to think and misunderstand. I'm against you defending the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm not against you for doing that. Yeah. And by saying this, <clears throat> given this podcast, people are against us and our mischief. No, I'm saying to you, be like those brothers who did something wrong. And they didn't care what people thought. They didn't want to stand before Allah, Yom al stealing the money of the pilgrims. So you make toba from what you did. The way some of these people were behaving, screaming, acting like maniacs and criminals. This is not the religion of Al-Islam. There's a place for emotions in the religion. On Friday, they described the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said about him, 
كان إذا اختطب اشتد غضبه وعلى صوته وحمرت عيناه كأنه منذر جيش If he gave the khutbah, his anger increased in delivering mm-hmm. the message. His voice would be ra- he would raise his voice. He would raise and his eyes would become red as if he was warning the people about an impending army that was about to come and pounce upon them. Emotions at the right time and place. On the day of the Eid, we celebrate. He said that the Eid, the days of Ash Tashriq, Ayamu at Tashriqi, Ayam. Aklim wa shurba. The three days of Tashriq, of Eid, the mm-hmm. Id Adha celebration. They're days of eating and drinking, ce- celebratory yeah. situation. Similar to that, emotions, you are sad, someone died. You shouldn't be laughing when someone dies. And you said, Alhamdulillah, the Qadr of Allah. Hey man, what's wrong with you? You're talking about Alhamdulillah. You lost your mother, son. What's up with you, cousin? Mm. So we have to bridle our emotions and. Uh, Cause the religion to uh, determine how we behave, not our emotions. This is a big problem. That's the, one of the big fawariq, one of the big di- differences between men and women. Allah said in the Quran, well, they said, the man is not like the woman. The woman is like the man. Like, not the man. Adults are not like children. Mm-hmm. How are we going to respond in an immature, juvenile, uh, delinquent way? So it's going to bring problems like the Khawarij. They're young and their mind, the, the ideas are off the meat hinges. Yeah, Sheikh, you know, you're talking about emotional intelligence in the sense that we need to know how to react and when to react in a certain way. But it just leads me to a different question then is in the sense of on a smaller scale, say you're having a discussion with somebody and emotions do rise. As a Muslim, when you're talking about your religion, how do you know when to drop it and leave that topic for them because your emotions are coming into play sometimes it is inev- inevitable though let's say I've heard you mention you know a, a khutbah you know, if somebody spoke about the companions you would be upset but if you're having a discussion with some with that person how would you know when to leave it as your emotions are high or you know you're getting upset or angry how would you know when to leave it from you know some, your experience? that comes with knowledge yeah it comes with experience it comes with taqwa that's why it's important for us to be exposed to people know what they're doing and what they're talking about, and for us to be surrounded by older people and knowledgeable people who we can learn from them, practical lessons. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm older now. I'm not mm. the same person that was, you know, giving dawah and studying at the age of 22. I'm a much older person. I pick my fights now. Mm. I pick my battles. Before, if you looked at me cross-eyed, I'll step to you and say, what you looking at? If you pushed me intentionally or unintentionally, I will step to you. And then it can escalate. Mm-hmm. I kill you, you kill me. I'll knock you out. I'll knock you out. You know, the other person. And Allah knows best. But at this age, it's not like that anymore. It's not like that. And I will share something with you guys, inshallah. And it's out of love for you and concern to share with you some of my past experiences that are not okay. Because I don't want you on that cultural thing that the imam, the sheikh, the one who's teaching is, you know, flying around with the malaika and uh, his perspiration under his arms don't stink, not to mention other things. No, he's like everybody else. Mm-hmm. When I was in Medina, I developed a very unhealthy hatred for people who cursed the companions. It was unhealthy because I had love and I have love. For the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, especially Abu Bakr and Umar, and especially Aisha and the wives. Mm-hmm. So I see his wives as my mothers. If someone were to talk about my mother, Miss Mamie Star, may Allah guide her to Al Islam. Mm-hmm. Anybody talk about my mother the way they talk about Aisha, you're going to have an unleashed lion on your case. I'ma set fire to your booting. You hear me, Aki? Uh, yeah. Talking about my mom dukes like that. I'ma set fire to your boo tank. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you. Yeah, I don't blame you. And my mother, I don't know what her end result is going to be, but I Isha's in Jannah. And he's, she's close to the Nabi of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when I was in the Prophet's Message studying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there would be seasons when people from Iran would come. 
people from especially Iran, you can see them. Mm-hmm. They came. When they used to pray, I would walk in front of them. I didn't care. I would just walk in front of them, disrupt their prayer. That wasn't, that's not nice. Got to respect the man, uh, no matter what he's doing, when he's praying to his God, even if it's a cow, can't disrespect them. Allah said in the Quran, La ta subbu ladina yad'una min duni lahi, fa yasubbu allaha adwan bi ghayli ilm. Don't curse the guys of those people who worship other than Allah. And as a result of what you did, they will curse Allah with enmity and animosity without knowledge because of what you did. So I don't worship a bakara, a cow. And we got to remember today what those two politicians of India did as well. Yeah, as it relates to talking bad about the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during these times. All of these people are against Islam. And here we are fighting each other. Mm. I'm against the people of the Sunnah, and they're against me. And I'm against them because they're trying to force me to understand Islam the way they want, the way they understand. Follow everything their sheikh said. I'm going to follow everything your sheikh said. As for the people saying crazy things, like the people who curse the companions, I'm not trying to be united with them. Lakum dinukum deen. But the people who are not Islam, why are we fighting each other over issues of ijtihad? It's because of People are sick. We have stuff inside of us. Anyway, in Medina, I used to do that to them. Mm-hmm. I was in Mecca making Umrah Hajj. And I arrived and I made Tawaf al ifada I was tired, like everybody. You did all of these rites in Mina and uh, Muzdarifah and Arafat. And then you get down to make Tawaf al ifada You are tired, brother. Now you got to get back up to Mina. So I was sitting and I had a glass of water. A big glass of water. And it was cold. And I was sitting there. The people from these people, cursed companions, came up. And they were all elderly people. It was about eight, nine of them. Four men, five women. It was quite a few. And they came up and they looked, you know, thirsty. Mm -hmm. Parched. And they were trying to say, can I have water in their language? And I say, Iran? They said, Iran. Abu Bakr Umar? They put this voice in their face. I took the water and poured it on the ground. No, man. I stuck for the law. Didn't the Prophet say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah forgave a prostitute, a karamakul law, because she gave water to a dog? Mm-hmm. Now, no doubt, people curse the companions. Allah Ta'ala said, Hum kal an'am, bal hum adal. They're like cattle. Instead, they're worse than cattle. Worse than cattle. But still, come on, old people, perhaps perchance that gesture of insania, humanity, would have made them think, oh, look at this guy, Mm -hmm. African-American. Hey, black lives matter. They look at each other and say, black lives really do matter. And maybe they come to the Sunnah as a result of that gesture. I had another friend. We would go to to the funduk, to the hotel, where the Americans came, British people came, we want to give them dawah, we give a lecture. And then when we got in the hotel one time, we got in the elevator, the elevator was coming down and we were packed in there like sardines. Him and I and the people from Iran who cursed the companions. And my friend just opened up and went boom, boom. He left out the gas. <laughs> I didn't expect that one. I thought you were going to say he's like, nah, express man. And he did it loud. Okay. <laughs> and if I had gas at that time, I probably would have competed with him. <laughs> I don't know why he. But that's no edip. True. By any stretch of the imagination. Even laughing at that, the Prophet used to tell the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why do you people laugh when one of you passes gas? That's what he said. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now I know you laugh because it freaked you out. Man, I know what that guy was. Guys, I would, I, if I had guys, I would have done the same. Because I was getting close to Allah by being offensive to these people. But that's not the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the yardstick by which we are measured with. Not this juvenile, kitty behavior. Not like that. So we can't act like people who are crazy. And it's not me. It doesn't mean that you love these people or what they're doing. It's just that we're held to a higher standard. 
And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned all those ayahs in the Quran. I'dilu huwa aqrabu taqwa He said, be patient. Uh, he said, be fair, be just. It's closer to having taqwa. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِيلُ اِعْدِيلُ هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلْتَّقْوَىٰ Don't allow a people's oppression towards you, a people's bad behavior towards you, don't allow that to make you unfair and unjust. Mm -hmm. Be fair and just. That's closer to taqwa, like the ayat. إِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا If you have sabr and taqwa, be patient, and when you deal with it, Deal with it in a way that is Islamic, in a way that is legislated. I mean, you know, Sheikh, you're talking about, you know, that we act towards each other and stuff. But don't, wouldn't you say that as a, as a Muslim, you have that constant thing of you are representing the religion. So in the sense of you have to act with wisdom and knowledge. And just remember to take it easy because you don't know who's watching and you are representation. Even someone like me, I don't have all the knowledge, but I am representing the religion in the way I act. If I act bad, if I do something like that, someone may look at me and be, look at this Muslim boy. Allah said to you, Akhi Irfan, and he said to me, and everyone's watching, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, kudu ansarullahi kama qala Isa ibn Maryam lil hawariyin man ansari ilallah. Oh, you who believe, be ansar of Allah, helpers of Allah. Mm -hmm. As Isa ibn Maryam said, to his disciples. Hey, you disciples, which one of you? Who's going to be from the Ansar of Allah? So the best dawah is the dawah of your behavior. And that's why our mother Aisha, may Allah, put her in Jannah, put us in Jannah with her and be pleased with her. She said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you look at his akhlaq, kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His behavior, his manners, it was the Quran. Mm -hmm. He was clean. He was patient. He was intelligent. He was articulate. He was fair. He was just. He was far. He was considering he had he had uh, intellectual maturity. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was strong. He was he was all of those positive superlatives that you can come up with that make people say, "Wow, this person, that's the man." Mm -hmm. He had all of that. Today, some people have some of those qualities. All of those in quali qualities were embodied. In him, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Another thing, Akhi, is, listen to this, my brother, mm -hmm. Irfan. And I'm really proud of you, Irfan. Taken from the Prophet's sunnah, he used to praise the youngsters for their accomplishments. And he used to develop them to get them where they fit in and to take their piece of the puzzle and to bring Islam forward and be on Allah. So I want to do this sunnah of praising you, man, in your face as an encouragement to keep going. Our podcast, we're growing, we're developing. Your ideas, the content. I'm proud of what you do, man. Keep that work up. But what I wanted to mention is this issue of the epitome of bad people. Fir'aun. Mm -hmm. Fir'aun said in the Quran to Bani Israel, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. I'm your Lord, the Most High. That's a lie. Allah said in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ أَفْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا وَهُوَ يُدْعَى إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ Who is more liar? Who's a bigger liar? Who's a bigger liar than the one who makes a lie about Allah while he's being invited to Al-Islam? He made the biggest lie. He said, I'm your Lord, the Most High. That's worse than anything that that film had. What they did in that film was sacrilegious. It was terrible and acceptable. Mm -hmm. But... This man said, I'm your Lord, the Most High. When Ben Israel, their women had children, he killed their boys and kept their girls. Kept their girls so that he can do with them what he wanted to do with them. Make the girls slaves. Can you imagine? He put them to trials and tribulations, made them build those pyramids and things out of straw and clay. Oppressed them big time. Mm -hmm. And yet, when Allah is jealous, sent... Musa and his brother Harun, sallallahu alayhi wa salawat was salam. Mm -hmm. Allah said to the both of them that they're going, Idhaba ila Fir'aun, innahu taga, faqula lahu qawlan layyina, la'allahu yatadhakkar, aw yakhsha. Harun, Musa, Musa, Harun, I'm sending you, go to Fir'aun. 
go to the Pharaoh because he has toga. He went over bounds. He went overboard. He went out of the limits. He exceeded the limits like this film. But Pharaoh is not worse than that film. The film is like Pharaoh's distant cousin. Mm. They're all from the same family. Go to Pharaoh, you two, and say to him a word that is gentle. Lay in. Lay in is to be oh. easy and gentle. To Pharaoh. Perhaps he would reflect and have fear of Allah. That's Pharaoh. Mm. That's Pharaoh, ya akhi. So the people who made the film or the people, they're your adversary. They're not worse than Pharaoh. They're not worse than Pharaoh. Mm. And you and I are not better than Musa and Harun. But Allah told Musa and Harun to deal with them in this way. That doesn't always mean you're to be soft and easy with your adversary. No, it doesn't mean like, like I just told you a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. I put fire on what? Okay. If you talked about my mom, oh, yeah, dudes. Yeah. yeah. And that what? Fire in the butane. Ah, that butane. I put it on you. Why am I put fire in the butane? Because the person is doing something that deserves that. Yeah. And that's why as we give dawah and we deal with these issues, Allah has just told us. And we want to be unsought Allah. We want to be people giving dawah. Allah said, Udru ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'ivati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. Give dawah to the way of your Lord with wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is putting things in their proper place. No one to speak, no one to be quiet. No one to be tough, no one to be gentle. No one to leave it to someone else, no one to you do it. No one to leave, no one to come. No one to make it an hour, no one to make it two minutes. Use hikmah when you give dawah and give them a teaching, a nice exhortation, a nice teaching and argue with them in the way that's best. He argues with me and he says, well, your mother, this and that and that. I say, nah, your mother ain't your, nah, 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 nah. The Arab said in the line of poetry, Auradaha Sadun was Sadu Mushtamil. Ma haka the ya Sadu Turidul Ibil. Ma haka the Sadu Turidul Ibil. Saad was trying to do something, but he wasn't doing it the right way. He was trying to take care of the camels to take them to drink at the watering hole, but he was wrapping himself up in one of those like Afghani, Pakistani things that they eat for in the winter time. You go to the yeah. message, yeah. you. Like a shawl. A shawl. You can't wear that trying to take the camels to the watering hole. You have to be open it. You're doing it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So we say that line of poetry to people who are giving dawah and they're hurling abuses at people. They're trying to make an Amr Maruf and Nahi al Munkar. Taking that shoe in the Iraqi war when George Bush, the shaitan, who in Ramadan made that uh, Freudian slip and he was saying, he was addressing the people in Ramadan. Yeah, really. And he was meant to talk about this war, but he talked about the Iraqi war. Instead of Ukraine, he said Because yeah, he's, yeah. he's a straight up shaitan. He's a shaitan. That guy who threw the shoe and it just missed him. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I wish the shoe would have hit him because I have so much dislike for the man and the hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way to give dawa. We don't throw shoes especially at leaders, at leaders. A man came and he was the messenger of one of the leaders. I don't remember, I believe it was the leader of Persia. Could have been the leader of Rome, but I'm inclined to believe it was the leader of al -Fadis. I'm pretty sure it was. And he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a message from the leader of Persia. And he was aggressive to the Nabi. He was disrespectful to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he had his mustache like handlebars, very thick and very big, like some people do in Pakistan, mm -hmm. Muslims. Yeah. Prophet Wasallam said to him, who ordered you to do that? He said, my rub, meaning the leader in Persia. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and my Lord ordered me to trim the mustache and to leave the beard. And he told the people, if there was ever a messenger that I would have killed, it would have been this man. Because of his arrogance, his disrespect, but he's sacred. You can't kill the messenger. You can't kill the messenger. The messenger is supposed to be able to deliver the message 
with immunity, impunity. Mm. You can't yeah. harm him. It's from the um, rules of engagement. Once they put the white flag up, you're st- supposed to stop. But we saw what ISIS was doing with people and how mm. they were mm. dealing with people. So we don't want to take it too far out. We want to deal with it right here, what we're dealing with. And that's with this movie. So we say to the brothers and the sisters, no, we have to help the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ بِكِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُ النَّبِيِّ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّ And remember when we took a covenant and an agreement with all of the prophets before you, Ya Muhammad, we said to every prophet that was ever sent, every prophet, every messenger, over 128,000 of them, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhim ajma'een. We said to them, after Allah, I have given you the book and hikmah, your sunnah, that particular prophet, I give you your book and your sunnah, your way. And then there comes to you a Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. Mm-hmm. And he is musaddaq. He is confirming what is with you. He is saying, yeah, this is the truth. Allah said, you prophets have to believe in him and you have to help him and support him. So when a seven Umariyam comes back, it's his job and it's his responsibility, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is wajib that a seven Umariyam gets behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So every Nabi and every messenger, they want their people of a Dajjal, al Masih al Dajjal, the biggest fitna after Adam was created. And every Nabi and every Rasul, Allah took from them a contract, a covenant. If Muhammad comes while you are on the scene with your people and your Ummah giving dawah, you are supposed to get behind him, believe in him, and help him. So if the prophets are to help him, we're supposed to help him. And we help him. But we help him in a way that's legislated, ikhwani. Not with these emotions. Not with these emotions. How would one of us, walillahi al mathur al-a'la, how would one of us, as husbands, we do something, and I believe our wives put up with more than what we put up with. I know in my case. Mm-hmm. I don't know in your case. You seem like you're really, really, really humble dude. Everything your wife wants, you be like, okay, honey, what, what else? What, yeah, honey, okay. No, uh, we, this year to where you want to go? Uh, vacation where, honey? I'm you, trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, you like that. But how would one of us like if our wives wanted to correct something she doesn't like about us that we're really doing and she puts what you're doing on the internet Mm. she goes around the house and she shows it and she puts it up on youtube she calls all of your relatives and she uh cleans your dirty laundry literally figuratively and shows the whole world this is what this guy is doing you're gonna what she did is going to cause a bigger fit now than what was already existing. Yeah. So that's yeah. the point, my man. Yeah, Sheikh, uh, I did want to take this conversation to a different direction about the idea of being of a mujtahid and stuff like that. But inshallah, we will cover that next time. We'll have a, a what? discussion. Mujtahid? Mujtahid. Is that, am I saying it correctly? Yeah, uh, mujtahid, so, yeah. But uh, we will talk about that another time in relation to some of the other, I'd say, controversy in the, the ummah. But yeah, we'll talk about that another time. As always, Sheikh, I appreciate your time, your wisdom and your experiences. I would like to just make a requests from those who are watching. We welcome all of you here to Masjid al-Rahmah, physically. If you're living in Leeds or you're anywhere in the country or the world, you're welcome to come here. There's a close-knit community and um, we open up our doors and our hearts to the community. But the thing I want to request is we're trying to move forward. We need more equipment. We need two nice cameras, like the one that we're using now. If anyone wants to donate Fisa that they will be on the screen uh, somewhere where you can donate. And I promise you, as Allah is my witness, my neck is on the line, that that dough, that cheddar, that scratch, it only will go for those cameras and you'll be helping to give da'wah a lot. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ad-dal ala al-khayr kafa'ilihi. The one who guides people to good will get the reward of it. And you will be getting that what? Whoever does a good sunnah, he'll get the reward of whoever works by that sunnah as well. 
analyze Ala and Alam. And may Allah bless all of you, brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.